zero goals against in the six starts that he has had of the Soviet seven games. The bad news for Team Canada, Kirk Muller is out, an injury to his right knee. He will not play in this game. The referee is Josef Kampala of West Germany, the linesman Thomas Mostrom of Sweden, and Lasse Van Hannen of Finland. The Soviets coming out of their own zone. That's Big Petisov. He clears it in over the line. The Soviets shoot it in there, and it is Darkland now to make the big save. Petisov just slid it in there, and... All alone, moving in, Billy Litvinov. Well, that shows right off the bat the speed of the Soviets. Uh, just breaking around the outside of the defense, James Patrick caught a little flat-footed here. Going across, Gosselin stays with Makarov all the way across the net and makes a super save. This early in the hockey game was a big save at this point. Against the boards now, it's Bartell trying to get away from the checking in against the boards. By Karutov, cleared to the far side, and it's... Patrick, Patrick behind the net, tip it off the board. Bartell having problems. He is on the limp inside the zone. The Soviet player to the side of the net and it's Tippett who gets it away and takes it to the far side. Bartell still on the limp and heading for the bench as Canada clears it in over the line. Tippett doing a lot of checking against Fetisov. Fetisov behind the net. Lead pass out to center right. Come the Soviets now. Marionov clearing it to the line. Behind the net now. Driver going after it. Number 25 for Canada. Driver being checked in there. Homotov is in there. Number 15 for the Soviets. A rink wide pass. And Canada is out to center right with Lidster. Clearing it into the Soviet zone. Shelnov, the rookie, back to get it for the Soviets. To the far side. And out they come now. Homotov at center right. The pass to Garasimov. Garasimov can't hold it against the checking. Donnelly's back there. They tip it along the board. Now behind the net. Lidster along the board. Still kept in. Starikov into the corner behind the net for Garasimov. Garasimov along the board. And it rolls all the way out to center right. And the Soviets will regroup. Number 12, there is Starikov. Rink wide. To the line. Canadian territory. Driver gets to the center right. Kerry Wilson. Ahead, flatly, flatly just backhands it around the board for the Soviets. Igor Stelnov. Stelnov along the board, playing without the helmet is Homotov. A rink wide pass for Garasimov. Razgetsky's in over the line. He leaves the puck for Shepelev, who goes to the goal mouth, but missed the net with that. And out to center ice it comes once again. Leading the rush. This is Kortnov. Kortnov trying to work for the net, and it's taken away from him. Some good work by Billy Aletinov. Back come the Soviets. Gerasimov. He's checked out of the play. And the puck winds up behind the net now. Around the board. Redmond. Far side just chopped out to center ice by Gagne. Back to get it for the Soviets. Billy Aletinov. Billy Aletinov on the wing. For Chumanev. Chumanev against the board. Number 28 back near the line. And it winds up at center ice on the stick of Perbukin. Billy Aletinov. Perbukin once again. And he had it go off the board checking. Of course, now Gagne's in there now. Gagne kind of roll it out in front of the net. Deneen is there, but he couldn't get a shot away, and the Soviets again bring it back. Good tempo early in this game. Over the line for the Soviets, Shumanev. Shumanev up against the board, back to the blue line. Fedisov, Fedisov, Fedisov moving in now, and it's checked away from him. The Soviets controlling it inside the zone, and it's popped free and cleared against the boards and out to center ice. And Shumanev back to get it inside his own zone. We've already played three minutes and 22 seconds here in the first period. No score. Fedisov out to center ice now. Chumanev. Chumanev over the line. Offside. And we'll have a face-off outside the Team Canada blue line. Only the second whistle in three and a half minutes in the hockey game. And one of the things that the Soviet team likes to do, they have 20 players dressed. They play all four lines equal time. For the Soviet Union, Vladimir Kobin at Skandaria. Finland is leading West Germany 2-1 to one in one of the lower medal this is uh, not a medal round game, but the second division of the tournament. Finland 2, West Germany 1. Big Fedisov back in his own zone, number 2. Fedisov checked up against the boards inside the zone. It is sent to center ice. Vasiliev squirts off. Squirts off back to Vasiliev. Cruises in over the line. Takes a bump from Driver. It winds up in the corner. Chip is in there. So is Driver. Driver loses it. And the puck is cleared to an open wing. And there's going to be a penalty to Team Canada. As Fedisov inside the blue line. The goaltender is out of the net now. As Makarov comes off the bench. Makarov is the extra man. Drops it off. Number nine is Karutov. Karutov leaves it for Fedisov. 
Fedisov at center ice now. Fedisov to the line. He can move it. Fedisov moving in against the boards. Carries that puck around behind the net. And finally, Team Canada picks it up. A reminder for the stations uh, to check your log. This is break number one. And we're going to take a break right now. Coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics. We'll continue in a Soviet Union on the power play. Driver off for slashing. Here's a shot off the shoulder of Gosland. It's batted out near the line but kept in. Now Makarov against the boards on this side. Makarov tried to set up. Now he's got Fedisov at the point, but he leaves it at the side of the net for Karutov, and then who in turn gives it back to Makarov. Now it is Fedisov. Makarov against the boards. Now moves it out on the far side. That's Kazatonov. Kazatonov. That is off. That is off to the side of the net now. Makarov in front. Trying to get it to it was Larry Unoff. He gave the puck off. And it is high in the air. It winds up behind the net. And the Soviets again control. Rutov. Rutov into the corner. Circling with that puck is Larry Unoff, number 11. Out now to Kazatonov. Had trouble handling it near the line. Feeds it into the corner. Makarov back to Fedisov. Fedisov moving away from a check. There's a shot right on, and it was a blast and a good save by Gosland. Out near the blue line now. First shot of the hockey game. Kazatonov on this side. They switch those defensemen back and forth. Larionov. Larionov circling near the line now. Backhand pass to Kazatonov. He's now playing on this side. Kazatonov in for Karutov. Karutov into the corner. They move this puck around. Larionov's got the puck. Larionov working in front of the net. Drops it off for Kazatonov into Makarov. Back to Kazatonov. Now Makarov, number 24, fakes it. Now give him go, but they don't give it to him. They give it to the point, and, Mak and Kazatonov fakes the shot. Gets away from the defense and shot it in there, and it's deflected up against the glass behind the net. Now here's Karutov into the slot, and the shot is wide. Fedisov moving in. 19 seconds left in the power play. In behind the net now. They've left this unit out there for the whole power play. Larionov, number 11, out to Kazatonov. Back to the corner. Makarov, Larionov, back to Makarov. He's in the corner. Two seconds left in the penalty, and they clear it in front, but there's nobody there. It's Fedisov pinched in, and the penalty is over, and Canada successfully killed it. Inside their own zone, Karutov. Karutov cutting in front of his own net. These guys are pretty tired. They've been out there for the whole penalty. Karutov still there, beats it behind the net for Fetisov. Ahead now, at center ice, the Soviets on the attack again as Drozdetsky gets it in over the line. Karasimov on this side, circling with the puck near the blue line. Now back near the line, kept in by Starikov, it winds up in the corner, and Team Canada brings it out. Flatley at center right, tried to get it ahead for Kerry Wilson, but Starikov came across, took the puck away, but couldn't get it out of the zone. Now Wilson. Going in against uh, number 22 for the Soviets, Stelnov. Stelnov a rink-wide pass for Karasimov. Also in there and clearing it around the boards is Darren Lowe on the far side. Now Canada with Flatley getting it out to center ice. Back in his own zone, Starikov. Out at center ice. Drozdetsky to the line now. That is Karasimov. He's checked in against the boards by Lidster. Behind the net it goes. Canada with driver, out to center ice, off the stick of Kevin Deneen. Up against the boards, Cortnell, driver, now over the line, comes Deneen, gets set, the shot ripped it over top of the net. In the corner, cleared along the boards, out to center ice, come the Soviets now, long time between whistles as Chomanev clears it in over the line, he takes a check as he does so by driver, Buck is in the corner. Back out near the line, Billy Alitinov, behind the net, Check, Rozjetsky is number 13, gets it in the corner. He's checked by Driver, is doing a good job out there. Now, digging it loose is Chumanev. Back behind the net now, that is Komutov. Rolls into the side of the net. That's poked out of harm's way by Craig Redman. Now in the corner. It is Chumanev, number 28. Back out to the blue line. Billy Aletinov shot, went off Redmond as he was cruising in front of the net. Redmond's got it behind the net, and he pins it in and holds it. Team Canada has just been under tremendous pressure. The Soviets have kept control so very, very long. There have been few whistles. The Soviet team, of course, really is able to pass the puck, and they can skate, and they're just controlling the puck as long as they possibly can. In the morning, Eastern Standard Time in Canada. Sunday morning at 4 Eastern Time, Canada meeting Sweden, beginning an unprecedented day of Olympic coverage on CTV. Watch for it. Face off is deep in the Team Canada end now. Soviets have had the pressure on, but they've had 
limited number of shots so far. They just moved that puck around and around. Now against the board, that's Coven. Coven back to the blue line. The shot by Kazatonov is wide of the net, or is deflected wide of the net. Svortsov, this is the fourth line for the Soviets out there. Svortsov along with Coven and Vasiliev. And it's cleared back to the Soviet line, and Kazatonov is there to Vasiliev. Vasiliev ahead, and it's deflected off the stick of Svortsov, and back to get it is James Patrick. Patrick off the glass and down the ice. And to get it will be Kazatonov. He's number seven. He plays generally. Back underway here. Soviet Union has a five to nothing shots on goal edge. The puck is pinned in a, into the corner there. Uh, Makarov along with Darren Lowe. No score in the game. We passed the midway point of their nearing the midway point of the first period. Well, another problem for Team Canada. Robin Bartel uh, hurt his ankle in the first shift. He tried to take the second shift when the team was shorthanded. He has now left the bench. And if Team Canada doesn't play Anderson in this game, they'll be down to four defensemen. And four defensemen trying to play the Soviet team with four forward lines the way they skate. That's an awful lot of pressure for four young hockey players. Well, Paul start on the faceoff. There is... The all-star line at last year's world tournament. The line of Larionov, Karutov, and Makarov. And we have what they call the green unit here. And that unit was all all-star. First all-star team at the world tournament in Munich last season. We'll let you know when they all five of them are out there. It's really something that played whistle. And Makarov touches it just inside the line. So we'll get another face-off. There you see him, Sergei Makarov. High scorer in the Soviet Union, but he's been hurt a bit this year, and he's not the leading scorer of this year. In the middle of your picture watching the game, the Czechoslovakian coach, an interested spectator, and then they're two defensemen, but their one forward is always backing up defensemen who press and come down into the attack. Billy Letunov inside his own blue line, clearing it rink wide. It's out over center right, Karbukin getting it down to the Canadian's line. Back now to Billy Letunov, swinging around and along the blue line is Gerasimov. And it's shot right back into the Team Canada zone. Lidster back there, number four for Canada, around behind the net. Canada trying to organize now. It's cleared off the stick of Dave Gagne all the way down the ice. And back forward is Billy Litinoff, and icing is... It is no score in the game. Coverage of the 18th Winter Olympics will continue in a... And from the faceoff, Team Canada again gets it down the ice into the Soviet zone. Svortsov back in his own zone. Rostjetsky's number 13 out over the line, and he is upended. And the puck is cleared back out to center ice, and a little bit of a dive, I thought, from that one. And the referee didn't go for it either. Joseph Kampala is in over the line once again. Koshevnikov, who is the leading scorer in the Soviet Union right now. Koshevnikov, who plays for Spartak. Jammed in against the corner. Down goes Craig Redmond. Trying to dig it loose is Dan Wood. From behind the net. Cleared off the board near the line. Moving in after it is Kazatonov. But it winds up down the ice. Petisov will go back for it. Number two. Petisov at the side of his own net. Team Canada makes a complete change. At center ice. Petisov moving in. At that great speed. And he rolls it out into the slot. There's the shot. It's somebody in front of the net. And Team Canada breaks up very quickly with Terry Wilson. Wilson going one-on-one -on -one against Kazatonov. And he got a weak shot away. Kazatonov collects it in the corner. Clears it along the boards. It winds up out at center ice. And Darren Lowe is there. Daniel on defense now for Team Canada. Lidster off the boards for Wilson. Wilson just rolling it down to the line. And it's steered right back out to center ice for Stelnov. Stelnov to Starikov. Over the line for Vasiliev. Vasiliev's quick shot. And the save is made by Goslan. And he just holds on with the Soviets beginning to pour in on him. Oh, well, there's a look down at the... What is that, the Team Canada bench? No, it is not the Team Canada bench. It's the Soviet bench, and that looks like Koshevnikov, uh, who's being worked upon down there. Well, there he is. fellow who's become very, very popular in Sarajevo, Mario Goslan. Popular among Canadians, obviously, with the tremendous performance he's put in, but also very popular with the locals here. He's one of the keys to the hockey game tonight because Team Canada can play tight defensive hockey. The Soviets are always controlling the puck, and in that style of game, you've got to have good goaltending. Ball start again on the faceoff, and they'll do it all over again. Coven's number 31 uh, out there. You take the draw. There you see him. Coven made his debut in the 1976 Canada Cup, but has been in and out of favor in the Soviet Union. 
This is his first World or Olympic tournament. Played some of our big series, but never big series for the Soviets. Sports off now, number 26. Around the net on the far side. Back out to the point. There's the shot by Starikov. It was a screenshot, and it was wide of the net. Vasilya along the board, taking a hit from Patrick. Moving in is Coven. Coven takes a hit from, D from Deneen, manages to maintain possession. He's used that strength along the board. Down he goes, but collecting it is now Stelnov. Stelnov behind the net for Vasilya. Vasilya trying to roll it out in front. That hit driver, I think, in the face. He gets up. The puck goes in front of the net. There's a defenseman out of the play. Now here's Driver picking it up, and he'll get the whistle. And he is hurt, and he's going off the ice. He's uh, going back to touch it. It's uh, number 22 for the Soviet. Puck cleared into the Soviet end. Back for the Soviets is Anatoly Belyanetinov against the boards being checked. Gets it loose, takes it out, throws it out to center ice for Karutov. Karutov cutting across the blue line, tried to roll it in front. And hit a player, I think that was Lidster. And out of center ice comes Team Canada now. Back in over the line. For Canada, Wood clearing it into the corner, but the Soviets again get it with Belyanetinov. Ahead now. It is Karutov getting it from Lariana. Cuts in front of the net. What a save is made by Gosselin. Tremendous save as he went across the green on the play. Now here's Lariana. In against the boards on the far side. They clear it in. Gosselin just shovels it into the corner now. Soviets attacking as Makarov is taken out of the play. Lipster's in there and it winds up back at center ice. And Billy Alitinov once again. Lariana. Arianov working to the line. He's out there with Karutov and Makarov. The puck deflects up into the crowd and will have a face off. Well, Team Canada short those defensemen, and we saw Driver also go off the ice. So there's Driver, but I'm sure he's going to be back. But Bartel and Driver, two left defensemen gone. Team Canada now playing Denio, who they've been using on the forward line. He's now moved back to play defense. Under an awful lot of pressure, the defense score is a little short. Well, there's Viktor Tikhonov, 49 years of age now. Played defense with Dynamo and retired as an active player in 1966. And then moved up through the nether regions of the Soviet League to take over this hockey club. Back in over the line for the Soviets is Shepelov. Cuts in front! It's loose at the side of the net. And again, the save is made by Gosselin. Got his glove down in front of that one. Now behind the net for Canada is Daniel. Daniel trying to work it to the corner. Gets it back again in the corner, but he's checked uh, behind the net by Gerasimov. Now just shoveled into the corner on the far side. And out comes Patrick, a rink-wide pass past the outstretched stick of uh, Darren Lowe. And back to get it is Kazatonov, and he touches it for the icing. There's Darren Lowe from the University of Toronto. He's played very, very well. If you turn the puck over, they don't give it back to you. They control it until they get an opportunity. They move it down to your zone. So you can't just give the puck away for no reason at all. You've got to try to be positive. You've got to make a play with that puck. So the faceoff. Kiumanev for the Soviet Union, but he doesn't win the draw against Deneen, and it winds up behind the net. No score in this hockey game right now. At center ice, moving up on the play is Kortnall. Kortnall over the line, but he just couldn't get past Starikov. Now here's a shot deflected just wide, cruising in front of the net for Canada was Gagne, and it's against the board. Soviet starting out now with Stelnov. Stelnov out to center ice, but Trozjetsky, he just tapped it back to his defense. Now back in over the line comes Trozjetsky. Trozjetsky around behind the net, tried to roll it in front, gets it again, and shot it high to the glove side of Gosselin, took it off his shoulder. Buck bounces up over the glass, and it's called for a face-off. CTV is the place to be. Olympic Winter Games. And don't forget our unprecedented telecast. 4 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. 1 in the West. As Canada meets Sweden, likely for the bronze medal. We'll be doing it live for you. Bernie Pascal and Tom will be here at the Zetra to bring you the telecast. And will be a much-awaited game, of course. Canada looking for its first medal in Olympic play since 1968 at Grenoble. Buck is jammed against the boards and pinned in there by Patrick. Well, look at Tippett out there again. Here are all the face-offs in your own zone. Tippett, as we've seen throughout this uh, tournament, James Patrick there behind. Tippett won the face-off back to him. The Soviets putting lots of pressure on. He had to hold the puck against the boards to get the draw. There is Patrick going after it again as Tippett wins the draw. It winds up in the corner. Carpen trying to get it out to the center ice, but it is shoveled on the backhand deep into the Canadian zone again by Schwarzov. 
All right, here comes Canada once again, starting out of the zone, the rink wide pass by Redmond, hustling in after it for Canada is Wood, he clears it back, and the Soviets start out once again at center ice, it is Svartsov, Svartsov over the line now, ducking away from a check, maintains that possession, drops it in now, here's the shot coming into a crowd in front, that was Vasilya cutting in front, but he just couldn't get his stick on it, and they wrestle for it against the... Ball seems to be more seriously injured. Shots on goal, and uh, in this particular instance, they tell exactly the state of this hockey game at this point. Nine to one favor the favor, uh, favor the Soviets, and they've had some real testers for Mario Goslin so far. Here's Karutov back over the line. The shot by uh, the defenseman Kazatsonov is wider than that. Dug out against the board by Larry Amov, but he put it right on Flatley's stick. And out comes King Canada once again with Lidster over the line. Now drops it off. Here's a shot, and a good one by Flatley. Back near the line now. Shot in. And a good shot there by Daniel, but he stick handled at the line and put himself offside. Well, the puck just took a little jump and came back out over the line. He's nodding in agreement. He's a little mad at himself there. We just bounced over a sticker. He would have had a little bit of room to get that puck through. And, of course, Trechak, who we see in our screen, has been just magnificent throughout this tournament. Uh, although the Soviet team has controlled the puck so well that the opposition really haven't had that many good opportunities against them. They have what they call the green unit out there. Now the six players who are on the ice for the Soviet Union right at this moment were the six All-Stars. Nobody cracked the Soviet machine last year, the All-Stars at the World Tournament. And, of course, Canada had some NHLers at the tournament, including Daryl Sittler and the like. But uh, these, they, what they call the green unit here, they play as a unit, they practice as a unit, they wear green sweaters in their practices. There you see him, Larry Onup, the all-star setter. Karutov, Makarov, the wingers. Petisov, here's a chance for Canada. It's off the shoulder of Trechak, lines up in the corner. The other defenseman is Kazatonov, and it's Petisov against the board. He's pinned in there. Canada getting it down inside the zone now. Flatley, this is the offensive line for Canada, and they're doing a job in there right now. Flatley, backhanding it to Kerry Wilson. Wilson back near the line now. Feeds it rink wide. Nifty pass on the far side. Now Lister moving in, and they force... Kretjak to make a save, still inside the zone, and Petisov loses the puck to Wilson, who shoots it wide of the net. And it winds up back down at the blue line, Makarov in there for checking, but Daniel cleared it away. Here's Daniel now, he's got excellent acceleration at center ice, he feeds it off the stick of Deneen, and it winds up deep inside the Soviet zoom. Petisov, rink-wide pass to Makarov at center ice, checked up against the boards. Moving up now is Redmond, and he shoots it back in there again. Dredjak, leaving it behind the net, has it thrown off. In turn for Shepelev. Petisov, to handling along the line, that is Homutov. He clears it in. Gosland, around the board, so there's Petisov on the far board, just ducking past the checking of driver. Feeds it in deep now, knocks off the puck as Drozdjetski as he tried to get free. Correct that, that is uh, Garasimov at the side of the net. They're in against the boards on this side now. And it's chopped down the ice by Team Canada. It's getting to the puck first was Dave Gagne. Back to get it will be Sheffield for icing his call. Well, the last ship just gave it right to Terry Wilson, and his drive was wider than that. But the best offensive series for Team Canada in the game. Some all-world performance out there by the, the five All-Stars. They got pinned back in their own zone. Can happen to anybody, I guess. Out there for Team Canada right now, and taking the draw is Tippett. Seems like he's always there in those face-offs deep in the zone. Canada again as Tippett has won it. Has controlled it at center ice. Cleared in by Patrick, hustling in after it now as Donnelly gets it out in front, or tried to, but it went off a leg, and he took a good hit behind the net by Stelnov. Now Starikov, number 12 for the Soviets. Clears it out to center ice. It's tapped back past to Homotov. Tarek off again, through center ice, right, intercepted. Lister, two good moves over the line now. Lister into the corner, tried to roll it in front. Donnelly's there, but he is ridden behind the net. They battle for it back there. That is Dan Wood behind the net. Wood, stripped from him by Homutov. Now swinging away from a check is Stelnov, number 22. Out to center ice now, reaching for Shepelev, but he's failed, and the checking gets very, very close out there right now. Karasimov over the line, throws Jetski. Jetski in front of the net, and that time it was Gosselin who stripped it away. Acted as his own defenseman. Out of center ice, Canada trying to hustle over the line. Flatley trying to get loose, unable to. Soviets, they drop it off, and here they come once again with Chumanev at center ice. Dropping it off, Drozdjetski is shot as wide. 
Canada with low against the boards. Out to center ice. It's collected out there by Billy Letonov. Swinging back into his own zone, Tarbukin. Billy Letonov on this side now. Number 14. Billy Letonov through center ice. Gerasimov. The far side, Drozgetsky behind the net now. Koshepnikov tried to get it out in front and went right to the far boards and out to center ice. Karbukin, number five. Back to the Soviets, trying to set up in their own zone now. Karbukin had his stick knocked out of his hands by Kerry Wilson. Good work, Kerry. Back in over the line now come the Soviets with Koshepnikov shooting it in. And the save again is made by Gosselin. Backhanded out near the line and Canada breaks out on a three on two. Down to the line now. In front. Wilson dropping it off. Tried to get it there to Driver. Here's Wilson again. Moving in. He shot and he was upended as he went down. He got a shot away but it hit the... Player in front, the period has ended. We've got another... The third period before the game was decided. Czechoslovakians, Schindel in goal here, Arnold Kadlets of Czechoslovakia, Tess Ritterball of Sweden, and Igor Liba right here in the slot gets a great scoring opportunity. And then Lukacs on the breakaway is stopped. Peter Gradin passes to Bo Eriksson, and Schindel makes the save. That's the type of game it was today at Zetra. Eklund leads a Sweden rush, gave it up. Rosicka gets a pass to Yuri Herdina right here. Now you'll see Eklund give up the puck. Czechoslovakia comes back on a three on two. Rosicka passing to Yuri Herdina, and he sends it high into the top glove corner. That was the opening goal of the game to Yuri Herdina and Czechoslovakia forward making no mistake, lifting it high past Ritterball of Sweden. Another look at it. one nothing at this point for Czechoslovakia. And then with Sweden's goaltender Ritterball on the bench for the extra attacker, while it was defenseman Bainak who had trouble getting the puck out of his own end. You see the empty net. Now here's the face-off. In the Czechoslovakian zone, the puck will come to Bainak right here. He fans on it, gets up. Now watch Bainak move, pick up the loose puck, and he sends it the length of the ice, and that's the clinching goal. 2-0 for Czechoslovakia. Bainak getting the clinching goal for Czechoslovakia, who remains undefeated so far here in the Olympic hockey competition. So Czechoslovakia defeating Sweden by a score of 2 to nothing, the second successive shutout for Schindel. And here's the goal sailing into the yawning net, and Czechoslovakia remains undefeated, and a very entertaining game it was at Zetra. To Goslan, as he's done all throughout the Olympic Games, has simply been outstanding. Here, Fedosov, a perfect pass to Makarov. Now watch the speedster move in behind the defense. Makarov comes right in. And Mario Goslan, who has a goals against average of 1.85 in the Olympics, a standout save once again. Makarov set up by Fedosov. Now watch Tumanev from close range. Tumanev number 28 will move right in front of the net. And Goslan once again knocks down the backhander. And that's the type of game that's been. Canada's had a couple of good scoring chances. That one by Kerry Wilson. He moved in. Larionov, Karutov, Makarov. Tippett out on the line with Dan Wood and Dave Donnelly, Patrick, along with Craig Redmond, the defense. And from the face off at center ice, Kazatonov at center ice, just moving it ahead for Makarov, who shoots it into the Team Canada end. Redmond in there along with Makarov, and it's Makarov who controls the Karutov, trying to jam it in front, and there's going to be a slashing penalty called, I believe, on Patrick. Try to break out in front of the net was Karutov, and I think he drew the slash. Well, Makarov uh, took Redmond into the boards very, very hard, and then coming behind the net, the slash uh, came from Patrick inside his own zone, but it started right in the corner with Makarov doing the forechecking job on Redmond. So a slashing penalty to James Patrick at 15 seconds of the period, and Canada, for the second time, will play shorthanded. There is no score in this game, and we are into the second period now. The Soviets did dominate that first period, but, Tom, I think the strength of Team Canada has been the, the sheer work ethic, first of all, and secondly, their ability to play defensive hockey. They have good defensive team hockey coached into them by Dave Kay. That's right, and they can play well when the score is even. They can play well when they're ahead. It's tough for them to come from a long way behind. 
And from the faceoff, it is golf down the ice. Tippett winning the draw once again. Fatisov back behind his own net now, and here he comes. Big Fatisov to center ice now, leading the rush over the line. Stops up just inside the line, setting up, leads it in. Karutov on the backhand, and Driver got in front of him. Karutov again, Larionov. Back out to Fatisov, back to Larionov on the far board. Karutov in the corner. Back to the point. Fatisov makes the shot. Deflected out to center right by Dave Donnelly. And back to get it is Kazatonov. In deep. And Donnelly right on top of him. Good job by Donnelly. And now Kazatonov has to circle away and beats it up ice for Larionov at center right. Watch some crisscross here as Karutov comes to the far side. Larionov drops it off for Makarov. Makarov along the board. Larionov. Larionov. Rink wide. Fatisov's got it near the blue line now. In deep. Makarov. Back to Fatisov. Back out off again. Right tic-tac-toe. And finally it's mishandled at the blue line. And Fatisov is back near his own line. Feeds it off a Team Canada player. And Fatisov gets it again from Kazatonov. At center ice. He's over the line. This time coming up the left board. Feeds it around the boards for Karutov on the far side. Karutov backed up against the boards. We've got... 38 seconds left in the power play. In deep, and it's Makarov trying to work it in front. Larionov back to Fatisov. Fatisov moving it in front, deflected away again, and out over the line. Canada again clearing it with 25 seconds left in the power play. Makarov over the line, Karutov. Karutov going to the side of the net, trying to roll it out in front. Defense covered up, that was Lidster that time. Makarov circling with it. Rink wide, Fatisov, he's got that big shot, cuts to the slot, then dropped it off, and there's a shot from Kazatonov, and his rebound went wide as Gosselin made the initial save. Now it against the board, jamming in there and holding it is Dan Wood, and the penalty is over, Canada has killed it off, and a face-off deep in their end. Well, that's the second time throughout the whole penalty, there was not one whistle, the Soviets controlled the puck very, very well, Team Tan was able to get one change on the fly, doing a good job forcing them, uh, all the time along the boards and forcing them at the point twice. The Soviet point, point men misplayed the puck and Team Canada was able to get it back out over the blue line. Good job. Sergei Shepelev uh, out there. He's from Spartak, one of the few not from the Central Red Army team. They have 12 members from that team playing with the Soviet Union. The puck is jammed against the boards and held there for a face-off. Well, one of the reasons the Soviets play so very, very well as a team is that their total team, of the total 20 players that are score in Gorky, so it doesn't, uh, which is only 100 kilometers away, and so they can bring their, their club together as a, a national team almost any time they please to train. Starikov keeping it in around behind the net. It's Redmond. Redmond, no score in this game now as Redmond works out and just under pressure from Larionov, shoots it out over center ice. Correct that, that was Chepelov moving in on him. Now deep in his own end, that's Stelnov. Stelnov. Rolling it to the line. Out to center ice comes Homotov. Tried to hop over a check. Trailing on the play is Starikov. He fed it back. Shepelov hits the line. And it's cleared around behind the net. Gosselin leaving it for Redmond. Redmond. Patrick. To the blue line. Lead pass. Wilson hustling after it. Darren Lowe, number 14. In and around the boards. Trying to control it deep in the zone. But it's checked away from him. Shepelov loses it then. Good job in there as Flatley backhands it out near the line. The shot and Lowe fanned on it. He saw the net, and he just took his eye off it for a moment. Now here comes Wilson. They turn and start up fights again. Wilson over the line with Flatley. They kind of run into each other just inside the line. Now Wilson circles away from his teammate, drops it back to the point. The shot, that block, is still inside the line. Deneen shooting it into the corner. After it there is Biljeletinov behind the net. Steering it up along the boards is Perbukin. And it's shot out to center ice by Goshepnikov. Deep in his end, driver. Portno. Had it set up near the line. Good move as he ducks away from the checking of Rozgetsky. Portno's over the line. It's offside. No score. 355. Gone in the second period. Canadian fans might look at a little difference in style through the neutral zone that Team Canada is employing here today. They're forechecking very aggressively with two deep forwards. But the third forward is always a long way back, almost playing between the two defensemen. And when the Soviets attack through the neutral zone of the puck, there are three men lined up. Instead of just turning and picking up a winger, there are three men lined up across the line through the neutral zone. Three defenders. Rozgetsky hitting the line, but it's stripped away from him again. They don't get an awful lot of room when they hit the Canadian line. 
Now circling cross ice with the puck is Koshetnikov. High score in the Soviet Union. He shoots it off a leg. Rosjetsky going in. Out of the net is Gosselin. It bounces. Takes a crazy hop off the board. Sanin gets it, however. And Lidster trailing on the play. Out of center ice. It is cleared into the Soviet zone. And back to get it is Vilya Litvinov. He drops it off. And the Soviets regroup in their end and start out. Jemenev. Just easing the puck out. Now circling back. Jemenev. He's got Pervukin on this side. But he gives it straight up ice for Koshetnikov, who circles. Again, they having trouble as Canada is putting a good pattern on them. There's a shot by Koshevnikov well wide. It goes all the way around the boards and back down into the Soviet zone where Vilya Letinov has got it. Canada makes a complete change. Vilya Letinov deep in his end, gives it to Fitsisov. Fitsisov behind his net. Starts out, beats it to Coben. Coben at center ice and he's working down on the wing. Coben trying to cut through and he is tied up and double teamed on the play and it's Patrick who comes away with the puck and drops it off for Redmond. To Patrick. Patrick up on the right wing board, trying to feed it ahead for Donnelly, back in on the line, Vasily, and he's got the room, gets in, shoots right on, and the save is made by Gosselin. Mikhail Vasiliev all alone, the best scoring chance of the period, is icing called as Fatisov touches it inside his own zone, no score, coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics will continue in a moment. Way underway, there's a shot wide of the net deflected. A good wrist shot taken from the blue line by Petisov. And Canada now, uh, Litzer rather, can't get out of the zone. Here comes Vasiliev again, moving in front of the net. And fanning on it was Schwarzov. He was alone in front, but I think his stick was lifted just at the last instant. Out near the line now, Schwarzov, number 26. He's pushed off the puck and it's wristed out to center ice for Team Canada by Donnelly. He was tackled by Tippett. <laughs> Near the line, the Soviets having trouble getting underway now. Kazatonov, when that happens, of course, we've seen it over the years. They'll circle back. They are very patient. Out of center ice, Makarov. To the line now. Makarov trying to work for the net, and it is tapped away, but a giveaway inside the zone. Now Larry on up to Makarov. He tried to roll it in front. Up and at the side of the net was Tarutov. And the puck winds up in the corner with Tippett pinning it in there, the team captain for Canada. And he holds it. We'll get a face off in the Team Canada end. Tippett coming off again. Block one shot late in that shift. And then the first shot, as we said before, he... Well, the face off, we've got Wilson out there with low and flatly now for Canada. And they're going nose to nose with the number one line for the Soviet Union. Here's the shot right on. And Gosselin is there to take it off his chest protector again. He's just watching Terry Wilson a little mad at himself. He lost that draw clean. He's talking there inside the, the circle there with his teammates. But that is not very often it's happened in this tournament that uh, Canada's lost his uh, draw so cleanly inside their own zone. They're pretty good. They've controlled the puck inside their own zone from the faceoff circle. Larry on off number 11, Wilson, who wins it this time, and it's behind the net. Doubled off against the boards by Redmond to Wilson. Wilson, number 20, flatly working up ice, but he fell down just as he crossed center ice, and that's why he didn't get that pass. Now Stelnoff behind his net, clears it around, comes to Wilson on the far board. Checked in against the boards by Makarov, and finally Wilson just elects to shoot it out to center ice and clearing it right back in again to strike Redmond. At the side of his net now, it is Stelnoff. Out to center ice, Wilson. Wilson hops away from a check. Wilson is circling back now, and he leaves it for Redmond. Redmond ahead for Wilson, and it hit the back of his leg, goes in over the line, but it's onside. Low going for the net, and he shot it in the backhand wide. Now against the board. Out come the Soviets to center ice. Now Rusov leading the Russians. He drops it off now, and it's offside as Makarov was in a bit ahead of it. Larionov, there you see him. Fans had a great opportunity to see that uh, at the blue line. The three men lined across. The man in the middle was a forward. The two defensemen were at the blue line. The man in the middle was low, who got back as far. Look at the three of them. One, two, three. Trying to guard that line, forcing the offside, and it's low. Not the defenseman standing up at the line that forced the offside in the Soviets. The Soviets had a little trouble breaking the three men at the blue line through the neutral zone. Soviets had three shots in this period. Canada won. Lister, much better period. Canada seemed to gain some confidence in the last five minutes of the first period, and they played much better. Canada meets Sweden in the next game in the middle round. For Canada, it will be the final game of the tournament. You'll see it live on CTV. Note the time, 4 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Breakfast with the Olympics and Olympic hockey. At Sunday morning, 4 Eastern time, Canada plays Sweden, an unprecedented day of Olympic coverage coming your way Sunday on CTV. Buck is inside the Soviet end. 
And here they come. Billy Letanov up to center ice now, and it is stripped away. Good defensive job that time by Kevin Deneen, and it's fired right back into the Soviet end. Back to get it is Billy Letanov, and it's called on the icing. So we're back into the Team Canada zone for another important faceoff. Well, it was Deneen in the same position as we saw a little moment ago in between the defensemen that stole that puck in the neutral zone. And the longer the Team Canada can hang in this game, less great for Soviets, then the better that... Uh, Way underway, back near the line now, circling with that puck is Per Buchan. He shot it in there, and out come Canada now. Portnell leading the rush with Deneen. Portnell's over the line, stops up now, waiting for Mace to catch up. And there's the trailer on the play, Gagne, but he couldn't get the puck to him. As intercepting it was Shepelev on the far boards. The Soviets starting out. Omotov with center ice. Over the line now, they fight their way through. It's cleared in front of the net. Rolls to the goal post, and Gosland. Covers it up, driver, I think, finally got it behind the net. We'll have another face-off. Well, you notice that the opportunity didn't come between the defense, and now the Soviets seeing that that middle is blocked up. They're trying to go to the outside. Here you see him breaking around the outside. He took the pass from the defense, trying to put it by Goslin. Goslin's staying right with him. Of course, at the edge of the net, Team Panda then covering up. Well, we've got a conference going on now at the Soviet bench. Tiomanev, uh, Kazatonov, along with Drozdjetsky, uh, Boshevnikov, and I guess they're just a little concerned about what's going on out there. I saw it during the last shift, too. The Krutov was up talking and uh, making gestures with his hands to Coach Tikhanov and so on. So it seems that they're a little frustrated. They're not quite sure what to do to break this down at the line. Well, Jimenev is the centerman on the line. He's out there now with Brozgetsky and Coach Shepnikov. And a penalty has been called a driver. Uh, was that delay of the game for behind the net there? I think he... So Canada is going to go shorthanded. I didn't even spot the penalty being called, but uh, we are now in a penalty situation for the third time. Hooking is the call against Driver at uh, 8.07 of the period. See how Canada's penalty killing is again. It's been almost letter perfect here. Inside the zone, there's Canada again, and it's cleared down the ice by Craig Redmond. And down to get it is Fetisov. Fetisov has the tone off out there. They're the point men. We mentioned the forward line. Catching up is Chomanov as Fetisov goes over the line, now feeds it in deep, and it's Brozgetsky in the corner. Back out to the point. Fetisov rolling it in front. The shot, to hit a leg in front. And working free is Patrick. He starts up, feeds it to center ice. Tempel's got it there, trying to flip it ahead for Wood. And Wood goes into the corner after it. Wood. Kazantonov checking on him, also moving in. They're trying to get the whistle in the other end, and they managed to do it with 122 left in the power play advantage for the Soviets. Compello saying that it was a Team Canada man that forced the faceoff inside the zone. He's bringing the puck outside. Outside the zone for the faceoff, not having it inside. But Team Canada's done a good job. Very strange penalty call. I didn't see that uh, infraction either, but uh, Canada's taken three straight minor penalties in this game. Well, I wonder when the guys in white are going to get one. Well, we've got... Dave Gagne out there to take the draw now against Chomanev. Gagne wins it, puts it inside the Soviet zone, and they'll group behind the net. There they go, crisscrossing around, and out they come now with Rozjetsky carrying it number 13. Rink-wide pass over the line. The Soviets now trying to work it to the boards. Kazatonov back to the point. Koshevnikov, number 29, to Kazatonov once again. Kazatonov. Now Koshevnikov. Koshevnikov circling, looking for that. Play. Here's Fetisov rolling it in. A hit a skate in front of the net now. Rozgetsky. Rozgetsky along the board. Just stopped there now. Feeds it out to Fetisov. Had to take it on his backhand. Now sets it up in front for Rozgetsky. Hit the heel of his skate. Rozgetsky in the corner. Chopped by Patrick, but Rozgetsky controlled. Now it's chipped away by Patrick, but only to the line where Fetisov has got it. Fetisov over to the far side. Soviet trying to control it, reaching for it, and batting it out to center ice is Donnelly with 25 seconds left in the penalty. Fetisov backing up near the line. Now works up ice. Fetisov looking to the line. They're patient. They circle back once again. Jumanev now to the line. Jumanev being hassled as he hits the line by Flatley. Puck comes along the board. Fetisov rolling it in. Good deflection in front of the net by Coach Shevnikov. And Gosplan was right there. Now Kazatonov, his shot to the side of the net. Now the penalty is over, puck is tripped free and cleared away and there's a breakaway. Driver going in all along, getting steady he shoots. Oh, the save by Tretiak. Driver out of the penalty box. Out at center ice once again. Back in over the line is Redmond. Flips it up against the boards and the Soviets. 
Ray grouping. They've killed another penalty. We're past the midway point of the hockey game. Nothing, nothing in this game, and it has been tremendous. Against the board, Driver pinning it in there. Coven strips him of the puck, moves up along the board, takes a hit against Darren Lowe, and Wilson to the far side. Redmond, Redmond to Wilson. Through center ice with some speed. He's through the line now, stops up against the board. Wilson dropping it off for Lister. He clears the side net. Oh, and the chance there for Kerry Wilson, and Tretjak was right there. Team Canada, after having Driver come out of the box with that great opportunity, that's what we need in the hockey game. Just deflected off the Soviet defender, and then we come right back, steal the puck inside the zone, and Kerry Wilson gets the good opportunity. So two good opportunities after killing a penalty. Lidster. Driver out there on the point, and the whistle went on the faceoff. Gagne a little upset at Colvin. They push and shove a little bit in the faceoff circle. It was Gagne who was upended by Colvin. Kevin Deneen out there on the line with Gagne. On the faceoff, Portno back to the blue line now. The driver knocked it down, controlled it, and then shot it behind the net. And the Soviet starting out at Starikov at center ice. Leads it off for Vasilyev. Vasilyev's over the line, gets bumped up against the boards by Driver. Driver takes another run at him and puts him in against the board. Now around behind the net. For the Soviet Union, that sports off. Out now, here's the shot. And it lost sight of it. Lose it, but they score. Colvin on the rebound. Goslan lost sight of it. And when he regained the view of it, it was too late. Colvin had it on his stick, and he put it up over his shoulder. Colvin was at a bad angle, and Goslan had made the original stop. Here's the defense moving right in from the point. Gets everything he can in. You see this foot down. He's trying to get back to it. Colvin just gets it. He hasn't got much room, and he just puts it inside the far post after Goslin has made the first save. He gets his uh, pad on it, sticks it right out. The defenseman comes across, taking the man, and Colvin can't, uh, jumps on the rebound and just pushes it by. Too bad for Team Canada falling behind here, 1-0. Face off of center ice. Colvin unassisted at 11:31, But it came off a rebound. And here they come once again. Erhuken at his own line to Karusov at center right now. 1-0. As Tippett checks on Karusov. Back forward is Bilya Litvinov. Larionov. Bilya Litvinov in his zone. Ahead. Off the stick of Karusov. But Canada regains control. It's eased over the line by Donnelly. Back out to center ice. Karusov. Erhuken. Erhuken to the far side for Makarov. Now working to the line. Bilya lets it off, shooting it in. Karutov a rink-wide pass. Makarov on the far side. He's checked in against the boards there by Dan Wood. Bed in deep. Around behind the net it comes. Backhand shot off the glove of Goslan. Karutov, with that quickness of his, worked out in front. Now rink-wide pass. Karvukin moving in. His shot is off a leg. Patrick got in front of that one. Down in the corner goes Dan Wood under checking from Makarov. Now Karutov again. They're starting to buzz around again. Now moving it in is Larry Onoff, but he couldn't get past the last line, which was Patrick. Patrick behind the net. Off the boards, they let it go down the ice. Canada perhaps looking for a change, and it goes right down to Tretjak. Tretjak just steers it up to center ice. Canada on the change right now, and hopping it over the line as Gerasimov. His shot is over top of the net. Now along the boards, Petitov steps off the fence. Took a hit from Flatley. Puck remains inside the blue line. Larry Onoff. Larry Onoff. Checking around behind the net driver for Canada to low. Low just risks it past his check as Petitov was moving in and got it out to center ice. Kazatona back over the line for Lariano. Lariano out in front on the backhand trying to get a shot away was Homotov. Here's the shot that's well wide of the net off the stick of Petitov. Kazatona keeps it in. Lariano in front. Great save is made and Josh Lamb on that save on Homotov. And it's cleared out to center ice. Back to get it. For the Soviet Union is Yacheslav Petisov. Moving with the puck at center is Shepelev to the line. It's taken away from him, and out comes Kortnow now. Kortnow to the line with Gagne, and he lost it just as he crossed the line to Petisov, and it's cleared back into the Team Canada end. Denis 
Starting out, Kevin Dineen. To the line, he's been speed as he stopped inside the blue line, tried to steer it past the Fetisov, who seemed to be out all night tonight. Back in over the line now, cutting for the net is Krasjewski. Scores it off the leg. Koshevnikov may have got it in front of the net. Rushing in was number 13, Nikolai Krasjewski, and the Soviets lead 2 nothing. Krasjewski goes outside Redmond. Redmond slips, trying to get a... Uh, uh, to stay with him and then uh, coming in late is Kozhevnikov that gets that pass he has no room to put the puck and he throws it in front of the net and all he has to do is shovel it in the open net the defenseman trying to get back to pick him up an easy goal for the Soviet but Drozeski was the guy that did all the work going outside and making the play getting it in front of the net Lidster moving up from the base off at center ice Kozhevnikov from Drozeski you know, what happens in hockey a lot of the time, you think back to the breakaway by Driver when he's all by himself, he gets the opportunity, Trejak, and then coming back with an opportunity from Terry Wilson, and then less than a minute later, the Soviets come back, get their first goal, and then add to that count now. Lindster shooting it in. At the side of the net now, Stoutercall. Feeds it straight up ice. It deflects off the stick of Pushevnikov, and Lindster's got it. Lindster for Canada. Ahead. Over the line, Tippett. Try to get it to Don Lee. Tippett took a hit against the board from Jemenev. And the puck is underneath Jemenev at the boards. And we'll have a face-off about five feet inside the blue line. And as the Soviet Union and Canada make a change, there you see Mikhail Vasiliev, number six, the cousin of one of the great defensemen in Soviet history, Valery Vasiliev. And he's got his number. But he doesn't play his position. No, and he plays his position. Does, uh, does Mikhail very, very well. And the young coming star for the Soviet team. Sports off. Jammed in against the board. Flatly. Out to center ice for Darren Lowe. Couldn't control it. Gets it again. And he gets it in over the line. But back there with him is Belia Letinov. And he manages to get the puck and clear it around for Perbukin. Perbukin along the boards, but... It was not uh, for Vasilia this time as Canada cleared it in. Uh, Patrick now in deep, flatly doing a lot of work in there. Cleared to the side of the net. Sports off. Out at center ice for Coben. Coben for Vasilia. Vasilia cutting across now. It's chopped away from him as Wilson did the checking job. Vasilia will try again. Over the line. Redmond on top of him. Behind the net. Vasilia still fighting off the checking. Sports off in the corner. Wilson's on top of him. Along the boards it goes. Back out to the blue line and hopped over the stick of Bailey Alentinov and it's center ice Karabukin once again. Rink wide pass. Ahead for Karutov. Good move as he got over the line ducking past a check from Kevin Deneen. But the Canadians just send it right back out to center ice again. Joseph Coppola, the referee, got in the way of that. Canada maintains possession inside their end. It's Deneen. Tried to get it to Kortnow. Goes all the way down the ice for the Soviets. Number 14 there is Billy Alentinov, and he's checked in against the boards. It's chopped back near the line. Deneen throws the check against the boards and takes possession. Soviets are leading 2-0. We have three and a half minutes remaining in the second period. Ahead and all the way down into the Team Canada zone. They'll be icing here as Patrick touches it. And the faceoff will be back down on the Soviet end. 2-0, Soviets coverage. From the face-off, number seven for the Soviets is Alexei Kazatonov. He leads the rush himself over the line, and it's just chopped away by Tippett. And Fetisov follows up, and he has the player trapped in Karutov. And so along the, block, the line, forcing a face-off again. But, you know, that's a very defensive game. Now we're down 2 nothing. What do you do? Do you open up? you hope that you get back in the game with a power play goal or like driver coming out of the penalty box or do you continue to play the good de tight defensive hockey that we were playing and we were frustrating the Soviets? What do you do? Do you stay that way or do you go all out to get the goals? I think at this point being down 2 nothing, you continue to play your own game and hope that we'll get back in the game, say a power play goal or getting an opportunity to score one. Shepelev out there to take the draw against Tippett. Shot on goal, 8-3 to three in this period for the Soviets. They have an 18 to 7 margin at this point in the hockey game. And we have 3 minutes and 12 seconds remaining here in the second period. 2-0. Soviets lead. 
So Shevnikov getting the goal from Drozdjevsky. Now Selnov in the corner. Had to get loose. Around the net to Sadarkov. Sadarkov starting up on the right wing board. So carrying that puck. Puts his way through. He's alone. The save is made again by Gosselin. What a game this kid has had. Now Danio is playing up front. He's got a man in front of him. He can get it to him. Driver throws it into the crowd in front, but they hit a leg, and the Soviets come right back out again. Down over the line for the Soviet Union. Get Asimov. He chases it all the way into the corner. Now after it is Shepelev. Shepelev clearing it in front. It's a flex off a of stick. Momotov couldn't reach it. Sadarkov moves in. They go into the boards with Lidster and Sadarkov jamming there and a tell for a face-off. Coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics will continue. Here's Kevin Lowe coming through center ice with the puck. Hits the line and it's Wilson trailing on the play. He drops it back near the line. The Soviets hustle right after it. Drozdjewski trying to get loose. Good defensive work there by Lidster as he reached around him and took it away from him. The Soviets from their own line now. Lidster moving up, shoots it in. Soviets will regroup with Vilya Litvinov. Vilya Litvinov leaving it off. The lead pass, Drozdjewski. He hits the line, chased out of the play momentarily by Driver. Follows it in behind the net. Lowe is in there checking on Drozdjewski. And it's Patrick. Patrick, center right, the rink-wide pass for Kortnall. Kortnall stopping up against the board. Try to clear it in front. And winding up in the net is Gagne. And as he was checked in there, the Soviets start out. Having trouble getting out of the netting. Now, down over the line, trying to get loose and around the official there was Sportsoff, and Team Canada takes over. Patrick, ahead for Gagne. He had a man at the line, but he was offside. He got the pass to him, but Cortnell had got a half a step inside the blue line, so the faceoff will be outside the Soviet line. Well, we saw the Team Canada player trying to get out of the net, and we should remind the fans at home that the nets here are a little different. They don't uh, bind the twine as tight uh, here we see the opportunity trying to sneak through here and get the get the opportunity to go to Trechak, but the nets are a little different. There's an apron that hangs down because they don't bind the twine uh, as tight in the back of the net, and it hangs down from the roof of the net. And sometimes goaltenders, even if they get too far back in the net, they catch their skates. And we saw the team down the man in the net. His skate was caught. He couldn't get back to back check to get back into his own zone. Pippen taking the draw at center ice against Coven. Fedisov. Fedisov loses it inside the line and clears it in front now. Here's a chance. They shot it just wide Donnelly in front of the net. Lister now moves in. From behind the net, here's Fedisov, who I have not been impressed with in this game. Tom, he is struggling a little bit. We're, not, we're used to seeing a lot better from him. Now out near the line. Coven moving in against the board. Vasiliev, Tippett. Tippett circling in the corner now. He starts out, lead pass. Donnelly couldn't knock it down, it's back inside the zone, and Kazatonov got it. Two Fetisov. Fetisov, a rink-wide pass. Coven, over the line, Skorpsov. Skorpsov trying to get it in front for Coven, and it's taken away, and Wilson's got it again. Canada continues to check very, very well. We're in the final minute of the period. 23 seconds left, as in the corner, Patrick. Patrick away from the check there from Vasiliev to Wilson. Wilson, time for one more rush here. 13 seconds left. Wilson goes over the line, but he stopped just as he hit the line by Kazatonov, along with Larionov, and Lowe has got it. Lowe, driver, and with three seconds left, he shoots it in, and it's steered into the corner by Kretschak, and that's the period. And Canada with a situation in the third period where they have to get back a couple of goals. Tom. We've played well defensively, but now we haven't scored a goal in five periods. We've got to get the, on the score sheet here somehow to get back in this hockey game. Two nothing. What a scoring opportunity for Bruce Driver as he steps out of the penalty box and the 21-year-old native of Toronto moves in and Tretjak, who has a goals against average and even one so far in the Olympics, makes the save. But a glorious scoring opportunity by Driver. Now the Soviets take the lead. The puck comes back to number 22, Stelnov. Mario Goslan makes the save. There's a scramble in front of the net. Goslan is down, and Vladimir Colvin, right there, gets his fifth goal of the Olympic Games. Unfortunate circumstance for Mario Goslan. He stretched out, and he just couldn't reach the loose puck. Drozdetsky and Alexander Koznikov also combined on scoring to make it two to nothing. 
Alexander Kozhevnikov get it. Forget that, and that was the 4-3 loss to the Soviet Union, which forced them into a silver medal uh, position. They're undefeated through this tournament. They were undefeated through the 1968 tournament, undefeated through the 64 tournament as as well. In 76, they were undefeated 5-0. Oh. Well, we're underway here in the third period. Canada is trailing by just 2-0. We'll see what happens as Tarutov shoots it in, reflected into the corner by Goslan. Larionov in there, number 11, clears it in front. There's Krutov, but he couldn't get the shot away. Craig Redmond along the boards, and he clears it down the ice. And back to get it will be Fetisov. In there also is Wood, but Fetisov touches it at the 34-second mark of the third period. We'll have a face-off on the Team Canada end. As you see, Vyacheslav Fetisov. When they've uh, had the puck at the point with the man advantage, they haven't handled it all that well while the Soviets have been on the power play. Now from the face-off, taking it loose, working away from a check. Darren Lowe gets it to the line, but not out as just backhanding it in there is Shepilev to the side of the net. The player goes down back of that net. That was Lidster under some checking. Now Lidster's on his feet, picks up the puck, goes to the corner under a great deal of checking pressure, and he left it behind. He's out at center ice with the puck, backhands it into the corner. Flatly moving in. Flatly takes a good hit behind the net from Stelnov to the side of the net. The Soviets starting off with Stanikov out to center ice, and it's deflected down into the Canadian zone by Homozov. Wilson, Gary Wilson, Canada's top scorer in this tournament, feeds it off for Darren Lowe. It was just ahead of him. Starikov collects it inside his own blue line. at center ice. The Soviet moving in now, trying to get loose as he got in there. Took a bit of a hook with Stelnov. Now Lidster, Lidster being checked, trying to control it against the boards, and he holds it there, and we'll have a face off. There is Krutov sitting on the bench, the guy that Bob Ganey says he thinks is the best hockey player on this team in the Soviet Union. He likes his desire, especially. Uh, that's from a fellow that was once called by a Soviet coach the best hockey player in the world. Well, we saw Stelnov being hooked deep in the zone, and one of the things the Soviet defensemen do very, very well is they're not afraid to move up on the play. They attack with all five players, the forwards and the defensemen. Near the line now, and he put himself offside. Did Billy Letinov, and with that, they'll bring the face off outside the blue line. Well, the Soviet Union is to see Kevin Deneen, and what a rough new year he has had. He has got a shoulder that is going to have to be operated on, and there's Darren Lowe, who's had his own problems here. He took a whack across the mouth in the game the other night. The game against Czechoslovakia, and now he's wearing a face guard. Well, the Soviets grouping in their own zone with Perbukin. Back for Bilya Letinov. He starts out on a bad pass out over center ice, intended for Drozdzinski. Deneen just brings it right back in. It's third to the side of the net. Kortnall's in there. Kortnall's trying to get it in front. There's nobody there, and Drozdzinski picks it up and shoots it out to center ice. Soviets on the move now. Down over the line comes Koshipnikov, trying to get it in front. And on the far boards, Patrick out to center ice now. In on the line comes Gagne, stick handling, but unable to get around the man as Billy Oletinov moves in on him. Drozdzinski's there as well, and he's got it. Number 13, Drozdzinski, out to center ice, feeds it off on the wing, over the line they come, Chumanev trying to get set, up against the board, set, fires it behind the net, Drozdzinski didn't see it coming, and working through some traffic as driver, and he gets the pass out to center ice, it goes right by Kortnoll and down inside the Soviet zone. 2-0, the Soviets are leading, Canada would like to get the next goal in this game, make it tough. And here comes Koshevnikov, the lead pass for Kovic. In over the line, driver on top of him, and he just throws him up against the boards. The driver's got a lot of strength. Off the boards, and out to center ice, but it goes by everybody, and Kazatonov, rink-wide pass. Vasiliev, dropping it back, hustling into the corner with the puck is Shepilev. Clears it to the point, Kazatonov again. Try to get it in along the boards. It's intercepted, and Donnelly backhands it off the boards, and out to center ice, and coven has got it inside his own blue line. Petisov. Ahead for Coven. Didn't see it coming. Gets it again. From sports off. Over the line comes Coven. Coven cleared it in front. It went off Craig Redmond's stick. Coven chasing it around the board. Back out to the point. It comes. It's just deflected out to center ice by Donnelly. It gets a good pass away. Daniel moving up after it. Daniel against the board. Trying to feed it back to Tippett, who was the trailer on the play, but Coven took over. Coven over the line. Being chased by Redmond. Coven behind the net. Redmond takes him out of the play, and it's now Patrick on the far board. 
Patrick still with that puck as he hits the line. Good move, and he has to chase the puck in against the boards. Moving in with him is Sportsoff. And it's cleared out to center ice once again. Canada with driver inside his own blue line. Tippett collects it off the boards. Crosses center ice inside the Soviet zone. And a giveaway by Fatisov, and the shot was taken by Tippett. Kretschak forced to make the save. Fatisov. We mentioned Fatisov not having one of his best nights tonight. Kazatonov. To the far side, out to center ice comes Makarov. Makarov to Karutov. Karutov over the line now trying to cut through the defense, and there's Driver again. What a game he has had, and we are going to get a penalty call. Soviets leading two to nothing. Coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics. Well, well Canada's got all the penalties in this hockey game, all the kind of minor stuff. This is called slashing to Wilson, as you see Larry Onov, uh, one of the Soviet players who speaks pretty fluent English. Inside the blue line. Cleared out to center ice. The penalty called at 4.30. Wilson off for slashing. It would look more like a hook to me looking at the replay, but there was a penalty to be sure. Here's Makarov on the far side. Cleared around the boards. Larry on off against the boards on this side. Tried to roll it in front. Cutting across his wood. Cleared it out of harm's way against the boards. Now it's off down the ice. Says driver again is right there. Soviets. Setting up in their own zone, Savarkov, that's the circling. Larionov, the center ice now. Their power play has not shown us much so far tonight. Karutov tried to pull his way through, and it's third down the ice by Driver again. How many times have I mentioned the name Driver in this hockey game? Now they come, and he's had a lot of pressure on him. The defense is kind of undermanned as they lost Robin Bartell and did in the second shift of the game. There it is, third down the ice again. Now Patrick comes off the bench to join Redmond on the defense. Karutov comes up the right wing boards. Karutov stops up against the boards. Back to the point. Kept in by Kazatonov to Karutov. Karutov with Makarov in the corner, but he'll elect to go to the point. Kazatonov taps it back. There's a good rig wide pass for Fatisov. Fatisov moving in. First it in front, and all alone there was Karutov, but he couldn't contain the pass. Karutov cutting in front and then deflected off Donnelly stick, I think, and out to center ice, and Fatisov will have to go back into the Soviet zone to get it. Out of the lead pass. Trying to get loose is Homosov, but he took a check from Patrick, who stood up on the play, and it's golf back down the ice once again. 6-0-3 gone in the period. 25 seconds remaining in the power play. Federal Republic of Germany is leading Finland 7-4 in the third period. The Finns have had their problems in this tournament. That is now a final score, I'm told. Moving into Shepelev. Shepelev to the side of the net. Back out for Shepelev, but he was unable to get it as it went off the leg. Got Asimov over to Fedisov. The shot, big save made. Gus lay on his knees and it winds up in the corner. Patrick will hold it in there and we'll have a face-off as the power play ends. Well, we've always said throughout this tournament that Team Canada has really shown a gutsy effort throughout it, that they've shown grit, determination, drivers are, as typified that. We see them on the screen. And these young players, that, you know, that's a very general statement. But I'll tell you, in this hockey game, the Soviets are playing with four lines that are well-conditioned. They're playing with three sets of defensemen. They go out uh, every 45, 50 seconds. They keep the game at a tremendous pace. Canada, through injury and short, uh, today, two players, Muller and Bartel, early in the game, they're going with three lines and four defensemen, and that's what courage means. They're holding the Soviet team, and they're just going on adrenaline because attrition will set in as far as conditioning is concerned. They're doing it through hustle, drive, and determination. Now, this is a team, the Soviet team, may I say, that has to go into the Canada Cup next year as the favorite to beat the NHL All-Stars. They are the defending Canada Cup champions. Here is a team of 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds were step to step with them and doing a great job defensively. This is the story of this hockey game. In against the boards, around behind the net, Driver is back after it and against the boards again, and he has really used his weight to great advantage here as Drozdetsky clears it to the line, and it's down the ice, Billy Letinov is back. Well, you're watching something here as these kids are giving it everything. Now, Chumanev. Clearing it in, going to the backhand is Koshevnikov. Tried to roll it out in front on the short side. Down goes Buslan, a scramble in front. The loose puck is picked up and carried into the corner. Back out to the point. Ilya Lestinov. The knee, at least it's collected by Redmond, and he shoots it down the ice. And after it on this icing will be Perbukin. It's called, and there will be a face-off of the Team Canada. And it's still 2-0. Coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics. We'll continue in a... 
From the face off, Starikoff at the blue line. Big save again by Goss Lyons. He got his hand on it. Saw it at the last instant. The puck winds up in the corner. Boy, the quick whistle there as they go in. And the face off will be off to Goss Lyons' right. Well, we've had some hard checks into the boards. We saw Driver taking the Soviet player. We saw James Patrick there. And Flatley was taken in very, very hard early in this period by Stelnov. So we've seen some tough checking as well as some tight defensive hockey. Kumanev, Grozdetsky, Pomutov, number 15 on the bench. A little further down, number 13 is Grozdetsky, but there's Coven. Coven, as we mentioned, made his debut in the Canada Cup in 1976. Played in the Challenge Cup in 1979, but this is his first World or Olympic tournament. It's interesting that he would get the assignment in those two tournaments, but not against an opposition in World or Olympic competition. Sadikov beating it ahead. Coven knocked it out of midair. Coven backing away from some checking there. His counterpart, Ron Carpen. A pass goes to Stelnov. Stelnov to the line, and he is chased out of the play. Good check by Donnelly, who came back on him. He lost his stick on the play, and Canada clears the puck down the ice again. We're at the 8.24 mark of the third period. Soviets leading 2 to nothing. Shots on goal in this period. The Soviets have 3. Canada 1, so that is now 23-8. to eight. Soviets have had the shots, but the Canadians have had good goaltending as the puck hops up over the, uh, the boards. And we look at... Vladimir Krutov, number nine. Memorable for fans, I guess, of Team Canada. The last game of the Canada Cup when he put the move on Guy Lafleur and scored a shorthanded goal. Guy Lafleur has not had how do you do said to him like that in a long time. Well, this line of Krutov, Larinov, and uh, Makarov, all of them are young hockey players and they can all handle the puck. They've all got speed and they've all got moves. Buck has cleared in past Petizov, and Kazatsonov is back to get it now. Two to nothing. Out to center ice comes Larionov. Larionov over the line, drops it off. Nice play, but Karukov then trying to get it ahead of Makarov, and Makarov wind up sliding in against the boards on this side as Lidster gets it to Patrick. Patrick trying to get out of the zone, has to handle it inside the zone, and finally it's shoveled out to center ice by Lidster. Over the line, low, Darren low. Now for Kerry Wilson. Wilson couldn't control it. And the center ice once again. And Karuta in over the line now. And he just rolled it in. And covering up will be Gosselin. He holds on. 9-18 gone in the period. And we're in the third period here at Zetra. The Soviets leading 2-0. Well, Krutov there went right to a bit of concern. Tom, Canada has not scored a goal in 111 minutes. But then again... Sweden, who Canada will be taking on on Sunday, scored only one goal against the Soviets. I was going to say that. in the game. Yes, uh, they've only scored one, so neither team has really been a great offensive machine. Czechoslovakia, by the way, have not allowed a goal in seven straight periods. So they continue to play very, very well, and that sets the stage for a tremendous gold medal game, all things being equal on Sunday and you'll see it live you'll see the Canada game also at 4 a.m. on Sunday uh, that's our first 4 a.m. Canada versus Sweden Eastern Time live on the CTV network out comes Canada now carrying the puck is Gagne ahead for Cortnell Cortnell trying to drop it off Gagne was trailing Cortnell gets it again sets up drops it back to the blue line went right through Patrick's legs way out of the net comes Gosling of trying to shovel it out to center ice and he doesn't do that, but the puck winds up against the boards anyway, and out at center ice, the shuffle had to put it back himself. Here comes Kortnall, ducks away from a check, but they got enough of a piece of him, Ilya Estinov did, that he takes control of the puck, and that line hits for the Team Canada bench. Rozjetsky, number 13, here he comes. Up on the left boards, at center ice, the pass for Chumanev. Chumanev cutting for that, Rozjetsky in front, and it rolls wide of the net. Into the corner it goes, Koshevnikov, Koshevnikov, Rozjetsky out in front with the move, and he shot it wide, I think it hit a leg. Now again out in front, Rozjetsky, and again he is checked on the play by Lister. In against the boards, Rozjetsky and Lister, and they hold it in there. Kumanev moves in as well, and we'll have a face-off. It's 2 nothing. Soviet coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics will continue. This is Ron Roosh, along with Tom Watt at the Zetra Hall in Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. Canada versus the Soviets, and it is a tight hockey game, two to nothing. Kovin has scored for the Soviets. Koshepnikov as well for Kovin, his fifth goal of the tournament. Koshepnikov third. 
And Canada continues to play so well defensively, and they are protecting that very, very important area of the statistics sheet as it's rolled in front by Drozdjewski, and that is the goals for and against. If it comes down to that, Canada, if they can keep this down, they will be in a good, good shape to play a tie against Sweden and win the bronze medal. That's in over the line now. Number 28 is Chumanev around the board. There's the back to the point. It's golfed in there, but blocked by Tippett in front of the net. Back out of center ice once again. And that's Jimenez. Jimenez loses it. Donnelly's back into his own zone. Ahead now. And Team Canada with Plantley. Plantley stopped up against the board. Plantley had it stripped away from him and has cleared out the center ice by Koshevnikov. Redmond. Redmond. Moving out now. Ahead. Darren Lowe. Here's the Lowe hitting the line. Tried to get it over for Wilson. And it was... Just taken away by Swartzov. Soviets again. Starikov. Swartzov. They got all messed up inside the line, but Flatley couldn't get on it quickly enough. Now ahead. Vasiliev unable to get loose. Team Canada again out at center ice. And the backhand pass by Patrick. Cleared into the Soviet zone. Wilson in there after uh, Starikov. It's cleared along the board. A rink-wide pass. Sportsoff at center ice now, hitting the line. Sportsoff trying to get around the defense. Knocked off balance by Driver. And the pass goes harmlessly to the far board. Flatley ahead. Knocked down by Kasatonov. Opens there. Back to Kasatonov. Here he comes. Up to center ice. The lead pass went off. Number 19, Dave Gagne. Cortnell's inside his own zone. And here he comes once again. Cortnell. To the line. Cortnell trying to pull through. Trailing is Gagne. Gagne flipping it out. A bouncing puck in front of the net. As reaching for it there was uh, Kazatonov. Sends a lead pass out. That's intercepted. Canada waits for Mates to get onside. And offside on the far side was Cortnell, I believe. Or was that uh, Deneen? I think it was Deneen. And uh, he protested. But I believe uh, he might have been a half a try. Saw him gritting his teeth there, and then he's talking as he's going off, talking to that linesman. He thought he was in there having a, the opportunity at the blue line, but uh, we've seen throughout this whole tournament. We're going to get a look at it. Mm. Well, it's hard. Close. We don't see both skates. You know, if he has one skate on the line, he's all right, you see. But uh, the linesman here throughout the tournament, if it's anywhere close at the blue line, they call it dead. They don't want to be uh, accused of allowing a goal to be scored if it was offside. So anywhere close to an offside, they're blowing it down. On the face off, certainly we don't have too many complaints about officiating in this hockey game. Uh, they have done the job. Karutov with center ice now. Karutov down over the line. He's got that great speed. Hustles in and then shot it right off the stick handle. And he just shot it wide. Now out to center ice it comes once again. Donnelly. And it comes back to Fetisov. Fetisov clearing it in. Karutov cutting across the line. It's called on the offside. And the face off outside the blue line. Well, CTV is the place for Olympic coverage this weekend, to be sure. Tomorrow, we have the ladies' final in the Olympic figure skating competition in the evening. And highlights of the 90-meter ski jumping, plus lots more in the afternoon. So join us for the final weekend here at the 14th Olympic Winter Games. And again, we remind you that Canada will be going for the bronze medal on Sunday morning, 4 o'clock Eastern Time. That's 4 a.m. Eastern on the CTV network. You'll see it live, followed by what we expect will be the gold medal game between the Soviet Union and Czechoslovakia. You'll see both games live here on CTV. So plan your time. You're on the West Coast, I guess you stay up. 1 a.m. And are we going to have jet lag when we get home, Tom? <laughs> Back in over the line now, especially Bernie, who has to go to the West Coast. There are the, the Soviets starting out with Bilya Litvinov. Inside the line now, Kerry Wilson knocked down. Wilson, rink-wide pass. And there's going to be a penalty to the Soviets as Canada starts out. Here's Darren Lowe out to Wilson and a two-line pass to the offside pass. And for the first time in the hockey game, with Soviets leading two to nothing, Canada will go on a power play. It's 2 to nothing. Soviets, coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics. Continue. Alexander Garasimov is off for interference at 14.26. Canada, for the first time in this hockey game, will have a power play. They played shorthanded a total of four times and killed it off successfully each time. 
Well, let's see what happens here. Canada trailing by two. Lidster. Dropping it off for Driver. Driver has been, I think, Tom Canada's best player in this game. Uh, you can argue that one if you want, but here comes Soviet back in now on a short-handed situation. They score! Puts off on the backhand. A short-handed goal. It's 3-0. Well, Team Canada was guilty of uh, bringing the puck out and just making a very, very soft flip pass outside of their own zone. The Soviet defender gloved it, set it down, and then threw it ahead immediately, and it resulted in a shorthanded goal. Here we see, uh, after the pass from the defender, cutting across in front of the net, trying to get back, makes the move across on the backhand. Too bad for Team Canada. Great move by the Soviets. Canada guilty of a bad clearing pass when they had the man advantage. Well, here we go again. Driver getting the puck inside his own line. Wilson, 3-0 Soviets. A short-handed goal scored on them. The Soviets can jump all over you. You make the mistake. Over the line now. Plantley along the board. Clears it in front. Wilson shot. Big save by Trechak who got the inside of his pad on it. Well, the net, too, jumping off. Uh, I mean, Trechak made a great save and uh, was shot all in one motion as the puck came across. But moving back, the net goes off, and Team Canada might have been able to have another opportunity when Trechak had to be extended to make that stop on the quick shot from the side of the net. Just kicked the net right off and making the stop. And again, as we've seen so often in the tournament, the play is killed. But Team Canada might have got an opportunity after that because Trechak was down after making the big stop. That was an unassisted goal by Sportsov at 14.41. Puck is cleared to center ice. 3-0 Soviets. Canada still on the power play. A minute and 14 seconds left in that. And it's James Patrick out to center ice for Canada. Ahead now over the line. Flatley trailing on the play is Wilson. Wilson through the traffic now into the corner he goes. So with that puck as he clears it towards the line, but he can't get it back to Patrick. Now he does. Kept inside the line. Good job there by Donnelly. He starts to move in. Gets set. And he's hooked from behind by Vasiliev. Soviet start out. Fedisov at center right. And he circles back. 47 seconds left in the power play. Kazatonov with Donnelly four checks. Kazatonov gets it again from Fedisov. Clear to center right. Team Canada gate is open as the puck is cleared into the Team Canada end. And they make a change. Courtnall. Courtnall, Gagne. Gagne over the line. Petisov. Petisov ducking away from a check now. Clears it through center ice. And back to get it is Daniel with 18 seconds left in the power play. So the Soviets get the Canadians hemmed in a bit. Rink wide pass. After it is Pervukin. He's checked. Now Daniel. Daniel. Ahead. Comes Lister at center ice. Gagne. Gagne fakes the shot. And then he, in trying to let the pass go to Courtnall, didn't get good wood on the pass. And so now the Soviets come right back again. Garasimov, he is checked. He's out of the penalty box now. Gagne back inside his own zone. He starts out. 3-0. Soviets leading the lead pass now. Carpen comes over the line. Fresh legs on the ice. Carpen into the corner after it. He's pinned by Pervukin, and it's held in there, and we hold for a face-off. see Cortnall. Cortnall, of course, on his way to the Toronto Maple Leafs, I would imagine, after this. The first round draft pick last year. Played Victoria, played on the World Junior Championships. We've got three minutes and five seconds left in this hockey game. Canada, as the puck rolls in, did it get in? Did it get in? Yes, it did. The light's on. It was mishandled at the side of the net, and it got by... Gosland, well, I'd like to see a replay on that to see what happened, but I think Rosjetsky is going to get credit for it. Well, Warren Anderson, who was on the ice for the first time, carried it right into his own net. Here he is. He's moving back. You see Gosland, who didn't expect him. He expected him to go to the side of the net, and it goes right underneath the goaltender into the net. But Team Canada, too bad for Warren Anderson. The first time he's been on the, on the ice tonight, late in the hockey game, brings it underneath his own goaltender. Rosjetsky will get credit for it. From the faceoff, back come the Soviets. 4-0 is the score. Soviets leading. Back inside the line now, Starikov. Starikov ahead. Team Canada will be playing Sweden for the bronze medal on Sunday. Tip it along the boards. That should be a tremendous hockey game. Shumanev. Shumanev to the far side. 
And the Soviets move up. Canada looking for its first bronze medal. First medal of any sort. There's a tackle thrown inside the blue line. I think the referee's going to let it go. Canada has not won a medal. Here's Drozetti circling inside the zone again. Clears to the point. The shot comes in from Stelnoff. And it winds up in the corner. And we're going to get a couple of players tossed here by Kampala. As the driver is involved, or Lister rather, number four. Well, Team Canada are a tired bunch right now. I noticed on the last shift that uh, we had Darren Lowe and uh, Flatley and we had Kerry Wilson out there. And they're a group that's been skating throughout this tournament. They had difficulty getting back to the bench. It's a tired group. They've given their all. They've had faced a team tonight that's in great condition that's used their whole bench. And Team Canada trying to get the, uh, on the score sheet here. We're using only the three lines and four defensemen after injury. It's a tough thing to do. And they're just hanging in here now trying to get through this hockey game, keep the goals against down as low as it possibly can, going into that last game with Sweden for the bronze medal. So it'll be Wood off for Canada, Stelnov off for the Soviet Union. Uh, four against four, four skaters to four. As the puck is in the corner, Redmond. Redmond cutting in front of his own net. He's a great skater, brings it out to the blue line, to center ice now. Redmond working to the line and then flips it in and chases it himself, comes to the side of the net. Flatley, Flatley, Canada with a little skating room out there right now. Flatley mishandled the puck, got it back, shot it right in there. Good effort by Flatley as he got that shot away. Kazatonov behind the net. Coming back to help out is Karutov, and he'll get the pass. One hands it out to center ice. Karutov to Larionov, he's over the line. Larionov moving in, he's had great moves, and he made two of them, but then the puck was taken away from him by Redmond. Out comes Kerry Wilson. Wilson, had it taken away from him by Larionov. A driver, round behind the net. Out to center ice it comes. Kazatonov, Larionov, back to Pitisov. Kazatonov. Swinging through his own zone to center ice. Kazatonov, number seven to the line. Chased by Patrick. Kazatonov trying to roll it in front and right there to collect that puck and take it out of harm's way for Canada is Dave Donnelly. He's at center ice. Donnelly trying to shuffle his way through Kazatonov. He's taken out of the play. Fizzy Soft then sends it to center ice. Larionov, Fedisov going for the net. Here's the shot. And Fedisov looking for the deflection. We're in the final minute of play here. Out of center ice now, racing after it and tipping it ahead and moving in now is Gagne on the back end and he shot it wide. Gagne with a great chance. We've got 36 seconds left in the hockey game and Gagne took a crack across the head. Donnelly taking exception. We've got a little pushing and shoving involving the Neen and Fedisov. Gagne and Fedisov there. Well, Fedosov should get a five-minute major penalty here. He just uh, took a stick right across the, the, the face of uh, the Team Canada player. There it is, right across the, the shoulder and the side of the head. I mean, uh, whether you hurt the man or not, in the rule book, that's a deliberate attempt to injure, and that's five-minute penalty and out of the game in international hockey. But there was no question about it. He just took a stick and gave it to Gagne. Well, we have to say also he took a crack to start it all, and uh, we'll see what they... We'll see what they do here, the way they deal this one. Canada and the Soviet Union each playing a man short at this particular point. Boy, there's some discussion going on down there. Uh, not too happy, that's Karutov there. Petisov and Gagne were the main combatants in all of this. Tippett's trying to sort it out. The two captains are out there. Homotov, number 15 for the Soviets. Rozjetski, a good little mob scene out there. Very little of anything happening. Kevin Deneen. So, let's just see what the referee, Josef Kompola of West Germany, will do about this. Well, he's got uh, Tippett at the edge of the circle trying to find out what the calls are. Uh, you see the players standing around outside the circle. He can't win the circle. The official... They boo him in the Soviet Union. They boo him because he plays, of course, for the Central Red Army, who have played in their own league 25 games and won them all. But they also boo him because he's considered a bit of a bully in his league. Now, what in the world? Deneen is getting... Uh, oh, they're going to get the... He's just going to toss the two of them. Petisov is going off as well. So not only is he a superstar, but he is also a tough guy. And there's our tough guy sitting down right now. 
Well, in my Kevin opinion, Deneen is not a tough guy, but he's going in too. In my opinion, that's a major penalty for deliberately trying to injure the man. And it doesn't matter whether you do or not. The rule book says if you deliberately try to injure the man with your stick, and he took his stick and hit uh, Gagne right over the uh, side of the shoulder and the side of the head, and with his team ahead four nothing, that was uncalled for at that point. That's a five-minute major penalty. They uh, will. They have given four minutes. So. A double minor has gone out. You very seldom see a major penalty called in international hockey. Uh, they would prefer, because uh, a major penalty is an ejection, they prefer to throw a double penalty at you. Now what this is going to do for the manpower when we've only got 33 seconds left in the hockey game is they play three, and th three against three. Three skaters to three for the final moments. Tip it out there now. Along with Patrick and Lidster at the blue line. From the face off, taken for the Soviets by Per Vukin. He just stops behind his net now, 25 seconds left. Starting out is Kumanev. He shoots it down into the Team Canada and Lidster will touch it and with 18 seconds left we'll get a face off inside the Soviet end. There's Lidster. And steady, he's from Campos, British Columbia, played university hockey at Colorado College. That was seventh round draft choice of the Vancouver Canucks in 1980. As I say, uh, there's got some people here who can play for this Team Canada. The young players. Here's Pervukin. Pervukin working on a two-on-one now, gets it back, shoots it, and a skate save is made by Gosselin with seven seconds left in the hockey game. Out comes Tippett. Tippett trying to move it ahead. And he can't get over the line as he is taken out of the play by Billy Alexanoff, and that's the hockey game. And the Soviet Union has defeated Canada by a score of four to nothing. And Tom, all things considered, you have to think the Team Canada gave it 100%, gave it everything they could possibly give. And in the end, four nothing is a pretty good result. Well, uh, not only that, what they have done is going into the final game against Sweden, uh, it does give Team Canada an edge when they're playing Sweden in that game on Sunday. If we tie, or win that game, we get the bronze medal. A tie gives us the medal because the gold differentiation now, Canada is minus eight, Sweden is minus 11 in the series. So what happens is a win or a tie for Canada against Sweden will give us the bronze medal. And it sets up the final game between Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union, who will play for the gold medal in the second game uh, on Sunday afternoon. Final shots on goal. The Soviets outshot Canada 26 to 10, 6 to 3 in the third period. The final score, 4 to nothing. Kovin, Koshevnikov, Sportsov, and Rozgetsky scoring the goal. Canada loses 4 to nothing. Stand by, of course. We're going to have Sweden against Canada live on Sunday. From the Zetra, this is Ron Roosh along with Tom Watt. Coverage of the 14th Winter Olympics will continue in a moment. <laughs> 